Okay, guys, so on Illustrator, you want to start a new project. We're going to go File, New. And if you ever wonder why Illustrator has this, it shows your actually desktop. It's kind of a weird thing, but you can change it if you go to... Um, you know what? Don't even bother. Just leave it. It doesn't matter because when you go File, New, you get a new page. So, guys, if you want to, go to Profile, Print. And if you're not familiar with points or picas, or you might want to use inches, you can change it under Units. Go to inches. And you'll see that a letter is 8.5 by 11. So if you collect letter or tabloid, it will give you that. And you can pick and choose whether you want to work in centimeters or in points. It just converts it for you. For me, I like using inches, 8.5 by 11. Your magazine must be in portrait format. So it must be 8.5 wide by 11. The rest, don't even bother. Leave it as is. It should be CMYK and 300 pixels per inch. Press OK. So essentially, guys, this is going to be your magazine cover. One of the first things you want to probably do is attack your title. Okay. Notice there's layers here, and I'll show you that in a second. I'm going to grab my text tool on Illustrator. I'm going to click it. There's other text tools to use. Some people are using some vertical type tool, which allows the letters to go vertical. I'll show you that in a second. I'll show you the type to path and the type tool. So technically, if I click, and if my magazine was called Fresh, Okay, I'm going to let go, let my selection tool so I can grab the corners, hold shift and proportionally scale the word fresh. Now, you might not like the font, so check my website for downloading fonts. Um, there might be a font that you like. I'm going to use old school Helvetica. Okay, Helvetica has also different types of typefaces and you will notice when you go to my website and you're studying the graph design principles, when it comes to fa font families, you'll see this. And Helvetica and Arial are kind of good examples of font families. Technically, guys, every font with a different typeface is a different font, but they're part of the same family. So if I go back to my Illustrator, Fresh Helvetica is still part of the Helvetica family, but technically Helvetica Bold is a different font. Okay. All right, so nice typography. I might want to play with a thing called tracking and kerning. Again, going back to the website, just put it in perspective, under five. When you go to letting, kerning, tracking, this is what I'm referring to. So going back to the Illustrator. If I highlight the whole word, and on my keyboard, I am clicking with my left hand the Alt Option button, and if I go with my arrow keys left, it will actually track the text to be tight within within itself. Now that's called tracking when you do a whole word or a whole sentence. If I click in between a word, say, or, or so letters, in between the letters S and H, if I do the same thing, I'm, call, I'm doing a thing called kerning. It only does the individual spacing between the, those characters. Okay? Keep that in mind. It's very good to know how to do that. I expect your text to be tracked and kerned. So you're probably wondering, oh, sir, can I just move it manually? Well, then you won't have the ability to change the font afterwards. Okay. Another good use of tracking kerning is watch this. I want to type in the word magazine. And I'm going to press Command A. I want to use a light style font, but I don't want it bold and big like fresh. I want it still the same size. Check out this style. I like it that size. What I'll do is Control A, select it all, Alt, and I'll track it until the E spaces out to the end of the H. So that's a good use of tracking and kerning. Okay. Now you're like, oh, sir, it's still too big. All right, shrink it down, highlight it again, hold Alt, and use your cursor key right. Oops, sorry, Command A, did I get everything? No. Cool. That's looking pretty fresh. Uh, Mr. Almeida sucks. Okay. So my magazine title and is looking cool. And like guys, you're going to pick fonts that suit your target audience. If you have a more, um, if you want to cater to more of a higher end crowd, you might want to cater a sans serif, uh, sorry, a script font. You might consider it a serif font with hooks. Okay. What I mean by that, if 
another example, very popular, Times New Roman is an example of a serif font. Um, where's Times? Times New Roman. So this is a font that has hooks at the edge. Okay, so you might want to use that font to cater to a more sophisticated crowd. Okay, or just a different style. Some people like using a mixture of sans serif. Um, like the word "fresh" is a um, Helvetica font. That sans serif means without hook. Magazine is in a Times New Roman that has a hook. Or you might want to do a script font. Script font is a font that looks like it's handwritten. Okay, uh, you pick and choose your font, guys. It's your project. I don't want to interfere. Okay. Um, actually, I'll just leave that for now. Just let me command A, Alt, and track it in. Okay. You might want to use graphic elements like the rectangle tool. And this is called what I call a reverse box or a knockout box. Okay. I'll get the black, and I, oh, that's cool, but sir, you just totally put it over top of the text. Well, if you right click on that box, you can go to arrange, and you can say send this to the back. Okay. That's great, but my text is still black on black. So what I'll do is make this font white. And you have a nice little cool style where text pops up with the little rectangular elements behind them. Okay? Um, don't like that rectangle, you can delete it. Or maybe you want it thinner or thicker or smaller. You pick and choose. So I can shrink this. Okay. Nice little tool, guys, to use on Illustrator is the alignment tool. Now, by default, it doesn't show up here. So you'll have to go to Window and go to a thing called Align. Now, make sure you say show options. That is a key feature. So some of your rookies that don't know this, click show options. You get this really cool feature that allows you to select it to the artboard or to the selection. Selection means I want this centered between the two. So for example, if these two were unaligned, so I hold that, oops. Uh, let me grab that and that. This is interfering, so I'm gonna just send this to the back. So if I have those two objects selected, I could say be center of each other. And I want you center of each other there. Okay. Now something strange, you're probably wondering, oh, sir, that text doesn't look centered. That's because there's a text box with it. This is where I like using the object expand, get rid of the text so it becomes a shape. And then when you go to align these two, let me just get rid of that they line up dead center of each other, okay? Oops, and I should probably align these center of each other that way. I can go object and group. Now, when I click on this, I select both of them. They're now grouped together as a family. And if you ever need to, you can always just go object and ungroup, and you can always select the other part. Okay, if you wanna choose color, you can pick that as well. Command Z, I'm gonna go back to black. So, this right off the bat, you can get started with creating your title for your magazine. I'm just going to talk about headers. I'm going to press Alt and duplicate fresh. And say my main um, uh, fruit. I'm going to just shrink this down. Obviously, I don't want it that big. I'm going to hold Alt. I'm going to duplicate multiple tiers. Fruit is so the keyword being fruit is healthy. I might bring that down. So I'm choosing multiple tiers of text boxes to kind of put emphasis on this main story. Okay. Now I could press Command R. This is a really nice trick, guys. Press Command R and then move your cursor to the ruler right here. Literally click and drag a thing called a guideline. This is where I'm looking for professionalism in terms of um, a nice, neat magazine layout. If I have that guideline, I can now line up my text to that side. Now you're probably wondering, sir, why don't you just put the edge of the page? That's not a good idea because when you print it out, it looks like it's falling off the page. So create a little margin or border around your layout so you can align things. Okay. Um, I'm going to use um, check out 
the story on page oops pg 36 okay this part is not important but i don't like the space in between that uh, the word the sentence check out the story on page 36 so i'm going to do a thing called letting with my alt button on my left hand side of the keyboard the alt option I'm going to press up and down. So the text is selected. So highlight your text on that and go up and down. And this plays with the line spacing. That's called letting. Okay. I'm going to choose the font size to be a little different. The letting's really loose. So I'm just going to alt and drag it up. And now the letting, it's nice and tight and not taking too much, too much space on my story. Okay. Cool. So guys, tracking. Again, highlight the word, use alt option left and right to do the whole space for the whole word or sentence. So if I think it, the word is healthy, I can do the same thing, tighten it up a bit. Kerning is in between letters, hold alt option left and right, but just make sure your cursor is in between the letters. And letting is when you have two tiers or more of words, hold alt option up and down, and you can adjust the, let, the letting space. Okay. Last thing I'll leave you with, because with this, you can duplicate this multiple times. If your photograph's going to be right-hand side here, then the photograph will be there, okay? Barcode. Really simple trick, guys. So figure if you're in the bottom right or left. Essentially, your barcode is a series of rectangles. Get a thin rectangle and duplicate it. Now, here's a cool trick. If I hold Alt and I duplicate... Um, a rectangle and I'll purposely offset it a bit if I go to object blend and go blend options I can pick the amount of steps so say I want 20 rectangles in between these two so I'll have 22 I can press ok nothing happens well no worries go to blend and say I want to make it or command shift B so I'll make 20 rectangles of the same okay you can go object and expand them, and then they become their individual shapes. So then you can have, it's a really fast way of making 20 rectangles, essentially, okay? Use your alignment tool and say, hey, I want you based on the selection to be aligned to the bottom of each other, okay? And that's one way of making cool rectangle bars. If you want to, grab some of them, make them thinner and shorter and replicate your own little barcode. Okay, a nice font to use for this is called the OCR font. Oops. Just type in some random numbers, and it has that kind of barcode feel. Obviously, I'll shrink this down. But essentially, guys, if you put off the internet a bitmap image, I can tell. So do not think you're going to fool me by grabbing a barcode from the internet. You can grab a barcode and replicate it, but I need to have your barcode and vector it means it had to be created in Illustrator. Does that make sense? Okay. So anyways, guys, that's enough for you to get started with your magazine project without the photograph. Signing off.